to the Trump Georgia case and lots of questions today after District Attorney Fonnie Willis said this. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'm going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. Mm. DA Willis making that comment despite Judge Scott McAfee's rebuke. Former President Donald Trump and co-defendants already appealing the decision to keep Willis on the case. So where is this heading? Good thing we have our legal eagles, John, you and Katie Tricaski here. So, John, what say you? I think Fannie Willis, unfortunately, is forgetting that this case is not about her. It's not even really about Donald Trump. It's about public faith in the justice system. And when a judge orders a prosecutor not to talk about race, not to throw around racial accusations, and then the DA does it anyway, then she's undermining public faith in the integrity of justice. She's actually demonstrating the kind of disregard for the courts that she was when she was testifying. And the job of the prosecutor ultimately is to make sure that the public has faith in the decisions of the courts and the justice system. And she's undermining that. And that's going to, I think, undermine her ability to carry out this trial. And it's only going to help Donald Trump. Considering everything John just said, Katie, why do you think she said this? I think she's daring the appellate court to disqualify her at this point. As Trump's attorneys pointed out in their appeal, one of the questions for disqualification is whether forensic misconduct is a basis for disqualification and what exactly that entails. And there is argument based on Supreme Court precedent that even injecting the idea of race, especially in a case that has nothing to do with race, is grounds alone for that disqualification. So certainly it will be interesting if the appellate court takes up this case, what they make of that. But I think that alone could even form the basis for a disqualification if the court wants to go there. All right. Now this. Former President Donald Trump also pushing the boundaries of his gag order in the hush money case. One ex-judge saying he should be jailed if he violates it. So, John, what's your take on that? First of all, he has First Amendment rights. In fact, I think the judges in New York City have gone way too far with these gag orders, particularly when the person who's subject to them, the defendant, is also running for president. I mean, he's speaking as part of the most important political process that our Constitution and the First Amendment is designed to protect, which is elections and political speech. I think that the courts have to be very careful, in fact, more than careful. They should err on the side of Donald Trump in making sure that he has the First Amendment free speech rights to talk about things, even if it involves criticizing the judge, even if it involves criticizing the decisions for making his case. Put it another way is Donald Trump could say these things in the courtroom. If he could say these things in the courtroom, how can a judge try to prevent him from saying them outside the courtroom? Katie? I completely agree. I'm not really sure what the basis is for these gag orders. It's always unlawful for anybody to obstruct justice or tamper with witnesses. And certainly, Donald Trump does have a First Amendment right to engage in campaign speech. And even in the D.C court when they upheld the gag order, they allowed for him to portray the prosecutions against him as political vendetta. So the line in the sand there does need to err on the side of Donald Trump and on his First Amendment rights. And I certainly don't think that these gag orders have been narrowly tailored enough to meet the standards set by the Supreme Court. Uh, just getting a little bit of an update on that story um, and on the criminal hush money DA Bragg case. Um, and some clarity on it. Um, John, just a quick reaction from you on this. The Manhattan DA office has filed a memorandum in support of their March 28th letter seeking clarification on the gag order. They write about the uh, defendant's dangerous, violent, and reprehensible rhetoric fundamentally threatening the integrity of the proceedings and is intended to intimidate witnesses and trial participants alike including this court. I want to get your reaction to that, Justin. The only ground that this court could have for restricting Donald Trump's speech is that it actually threatens that there's an imminent threat of obstruction of justice. Now, you can't just as a prosecutor throw that red flag out there. You have to have some proof. There has to be evidence, I think, that Donald Trump's statements actually are interfering with the ability of the court to carry out this trial. You can't just accept the prosecution's word for it. We have to see evidence. We have to see examples, and they have to be real. They can't just be crazy people writing things on the internet. 
All right, John and Katie, I appreciate you breaking us, uh, staying with us, and on the breaking news to you, John, as well. Katie, thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.